Hello and welcome to episode 17 of The Silver Lining, the weekly geekly talk show where we discuss uh, pretty much anything and everything uh, that might be going on. Well, not really. We usually just pick a topic. <laughs> um, I am I am your host, uh, Uncle Greg, Uncle Silver, uh, Silver Greg on Twitter, however you want to call me. Uh, and I would like to also welcome my co-host, you, the chat, uh, the viewers, the people who are in here live right now, and we can discuss things going back and forth because that's what I'd like to do. I like to have these discussions and I like, I, I hope that you take these discussions with you and, and take them to somewhere. Else. These are like, these are like, uh, uh, nerdy Ted talks, but there's like 20 or 30 people here <laughs> instead of the room full of people. Um, but hello to everybody in the chat, uh, Squeak, CT, Element, Suave, Unqualified Gamer, who I haven't seen in a while, uh, Real Chris, Rox Cat, The Nero, uh, these are the people that are just on my screen right now, I play, uh, J-Punk, Squeak, uh, CT, everybody, <laughs> um, who is my co-host chat, um, so before, before we get started, uh, I wanted to share a couple of, I, I picked up. I um, uh, I saw this in the case at the Goodwill store. This is a, what like a storage for Vita games, and it had three games in it: um, Batman, Arkham, Blackgate, Final Fantasy X, and Killzone. Oh, oh, Siberian Ninja! Hello there. I saw, I saw you and King Chaos, Lady Foxheart. I'm sorry. See, I gotta stop doing that because I always feel like I'm excluding people. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, this is really cool. I mean, it was like eight bucks, and I got three games and a little case for it. Now all I need is a Vita because I don't have one and I can't find one. <laughs> no, no, Suave, I don't have a Vita, but like, but. It had Final Fantasy X in it. I had to buy it. I no, I didn't. Um, I had gotten some other stuff that I had shared uh, throughout the week, like Final Fantasy VI for GBA, and <laughs> um, oh, I also picked up. Uh, where's the? It's easier just to show you the box for it. Uh, this is what I picked up today. Um, J Five Creates. Yeah, J Five Create Create. Yeah, J5 Create. Uh, they do uh, electronics and stuff. Uh, I bought a USB 3.0 powered hub. Uh, this is awesome because now I don't have everything hooked up to my laptop. Uh, it's all just one thing. So if I need to move my laptop, all I have to do is unplug the hub. And I'm super excited that I finally got it. Um, sponsored by J5 Create. Uh, I wish they were sponsored by J5 Create because J5, J, the reason I went for J5 Create is because I bought their ethernet uh, adapter for the Switch and it is one of the ones that works because like the Insignia one doesn't work with the Switch for some reason and it is 3.0 so when the 3.0 uh, uh, ports are more active or on, uh, it'll work better with those and, and I love it. I, I think they are... They immediately have a customer with me uh, because so far I've gotten two products from them and two products have worked very well. Um, I want to thank you guys because the reason I went and I had the money to buy that and I bought a $25 memory card for my camera that I picked up at the Goodwill store a couple months ago. Uh, I, I It was a Canon 60D, but I needed a high-speed memory card, so I finally got one of those. The reason I was able to buy one is because I got my first ever Twitch payout. Uh, my first first time ever that my that the Twitch money came through. So I'm thanking you guys for buying that stuff for me. And I, what I wanted to do was invest it back into the channel. Uh, I, I still don't know if I'm going to buy like a green screen or something. Uh, I, I have a little... It wasn't a whole, whole lot, but it was enough to buy a couple of things that I needed. Uh, so thank you guys so, so much. Uh, I'm just enamored by this new Spyro HD gameplay. Uh-oh. Hold on a second. I have to move my laptop. Oh, there we go. Uh, there we go. There we go. I had to plug something back in. You should buy a CG dinosaur. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Um... 
but yeah, uh, um, was it? Okay, I think it's, 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 yeah. Uh, so so thank you so much for that. I, I it, it still just it, it still just means the world to me that I. You know, we grew up for so long, and I, I've I have said this a million times. So if you if you're commonly here, this is going to be a broken record. If this is your first time catching a stream or watching a video on YouTube or something, then, then this may be new to you. But we we grow up, we've grown up for so long, and especially for the older ones like us, being told that the things that these things that we do, like being geeky and talking about this stuff and and playing these games and doing all that, it is never going to get us anywhere. So the, the idea that I come on here and I play games and then I talk to you guys and, and I do it because it's fun. And I, I was able to draw enough of an income to, to buy things to even to make it even better. It is just so amazing to me. And, and it's still, I got the notification that the money was transferred in and I was still like, Oh my God, like really? I, I, I say it every time somebody somebody subs or something like that. You know, it, it's so amazing that I, I'm doing this for fun and somebody wants to pay for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's so unbelievable. Um, And, and I, I, I think about that. And when I do think about that, it makes me happy. And it removes a lot of the stress that I go through in the rest of the day. And that's, that's sort of the important segue here is that there, on, let me adjust my seat here because, okay. I, for the last few weeks, <laughs> Lady Fox are in the hunt with a sub. Look at speak of the devil, speak of the, the, the delightful devil. Uh, thank you, Lady Foxheart so much. You see, like all I was doing was talking and somebody threw a couple bucks my way, like, that's so weird to me. <laughs> um, but so, uh, Mambo, what's going on? Uh, for the last few weeks, and, and I'm going to, I'll be, I'll level with you 100%. It has been for the last few weeks. And this happens every year around the summer because I am not a huge summer person. I don't like the heat. I don't like the, the unbearable feeling of it all. Um, it, it, you feel like you can't do anything, you can't function, and it, and it's such a mentally, it's such a downer. Like people don't like winter because winter feels like such a downer, like you're trapped in the house and stuff. I I don't like summer because I feel trapped in the house. I I I don't want to stray far from my air conditioner. And, and when you go outside, everybody's in a pissy mood, and uh, it I always get kind of depressed around the summertime, and and it is unfortunately has been like clockwork that it happens and it's been it's already started uh this year because we had that weird winter where winter never ended and then it it almost immediately went right into summer where even in that time that time frame when it wasn't exactly hot it was humid and it was rainy and it was it was just a miserable feeling so i i think that the 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 sort of summer blues are starting to kick in and it's it, what doesn't help is stress and uh, they feed each other you know i i get i get bummed out and then having to do other things while i'm bummed out makes me stressful and then the fact that i'm stressed out makes me blue you know what i mean like it, it's it's a bad bad cycle um so i <laughs> here in florida we don't have winter yeah you have like you have like versions of summer <laughs> Um, so what I kind of wanted to talk about today, and before we get started, I am not an expert on any of this. I am not a psychologist. I am not a therapist. I am not any one of those things. I am a person who experiences it and tries my best to deal with it. So I thought this would be a good forum for us to discuss it. To, for me to share the kinds of things that I, the kinds of things that happen, the kinds of things that I try and avoid, the kinds of things I do to help when it, when I'm down and I want to get your input on it. I want to discuss this with you because you guys probably have different ideas about what you do, how you do it, when you do it, how much you do it. We had a conversation about this before where we talked about video games as an escape and how much is too much 
Uh, so this kind of plays into that. Uh, so let, let's check out some of the, uh, what do we got here? Uh, got some commission money. So I felt I should share it. See, yeah. Lady Foxheart. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, summer does have good food though. But I uh, squeak. I can barbecue any time of the year. Uh, I, I have fired up the grill when it was 40 degrees outside. And I, I think that that's unsafe and I've done it anyway. Uh, I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a psychologist, though not certified. I don't like summer because I can't eat chili and chicken pot pie at nausea. Oh, <laughs> um, oh only a bachelor's degree. Oh, okay. you're more qualified than I am, CT. Um, experiment, uh, experiment. Hello, experiment. By the way, uh, experiment. Yes, uh, it is a seasonal affective disorder, but I think most people associate it with the holidays. I think every time I hear about a uh, seasonal affective disorder which is ironic that the initials are sad, but um, I always hear about it in the winter because a lot of people don't like the winter. They don't like being cooped up in the house. We live in essentially an extrovert society. So the idea of not being able to get out of the house much for the, for the larger percentage of the population is unbearable. Whereas I'm an introvert, the idea of having to be in the house for a long period of time, as long as I got food and stuff to do, is actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, I, I think <laughs> sad boys feels bad, man. Uh, so while the lack of sunlight does that to me. Um, they say that Washington, Washington state in Oregon, they have problems with that where, because there's always a lot of cloud cover. So that causes a lot of depression. Uh, just it, it, and it is, it is really that it's not even the weather so much as it's just the lack of light and everything is just sort of has this gray tone on it. I, I like the lack of sunlight to an extent. I can go a few days when it's cloudy and, and be fine when it, 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 when it goes a little too long, that does, it does kind of bug me. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think one of the first things that I wanted to share with you guys is, uh, when, when I am most stressed out. And I, I think one of the things that I've come to learn stresses me out more than anything is the stress and anxiety of other people. Um, and the reason I want to discuss some of this stuff is that I kind of want to gauge if I'm the only one that's like this or if this bothers you guys too and, and what you guys do to avoid some of this stuff. Um, the stress and anxiety of other people. I, I work at a train station and... People run late. Uh, hi, hi, Ace. Uh, people run late. You know, they're, they're, the train's almost there and they got to get their tickets or they got to get their pass or something and they got their credit card. So they run in and they're very anxious. They're very fast motions. They're, they're digging through their purse or they're trying to or fumbling about in their wallet and they're, dro they're putting stuff down and they're dropping stuff. That stresses me out so much because I, I feed off of that anxiety and it's like, they're moving quick. So I need to move quick. I'm going to, I'm worried about making a mistake. And then now all of a sudden we're all in a panic. So I'm getting to the point where I am trying to calm people down and say like, just take it easy. You're going to catch a train. There's another train later, but I, it is one of the things that has, that I've noticed is really my biggest issue. And that issue has been magnified or is magnified when I get into my car and drive. Uh, I have no problem getting in the car and driving to work in the morning because I, I work, I leave my house at five 15 in the morning or so. And there is hardly, there's hardly anybody on the road. The second I'm driving and someone is behind me on the road, I'm immediately anxious. I'm immediately stressed out. I feel it. I'll pull over and let them go, uh, that early in the morning. Um, Hang on. Uh, my, I, I'm at work. I'm in my own environment. People come in and they make me anxious when they're anxious. But for the most part, everybody's kind of chill and everybody's just waiting for their train. I'm okay. The second I get in my car to drive away from work and have to get on the road, I am immediately stressed out again. Immediately. Because there's always people on the road. They drive like idiots or they drive like maniacs or they, or I'm worried that they're thinking I'm driving like a maniac. So that's making me worried. And it is a, just a nasty cycle that happens. Once I get home, I'm fine again. 
I'm I'm home. I'm away, which that one I understand because I'm home. I'm in my personal space. But the bigger issue is that I am away from everything. I'm away from people and their stress. And that is is helping me. So I would say that the first best thing you can do when you have a lot of stress is to separate yourself from people entirely. If you have the option to go home, go home. That's the first thing, which is probably not always the case, uh, unless your stressors are at home, in which case, don't go home, go somewhere else. Uh, my biggest thing is just to, I, I try and get away. That's why I like to hike. That's why I, I got into hiking. That's why I have a creek not far from the house. I'll go there, but the there's basketball courts and tennis courts and stuff. I don't do any of that. No one goes to the to the actual creek part. So I go to the creek and there's no and I'm never bothered. Uh let's go through some of this here. Uh so yeah, sounds like seasonal disorder. Kingdom Hearts has me stressed out. Uh I have that, but the winter is what makes me depressed. Yeah. Honestly, I've never heard of someone getting depressed in the summer, but it's always summer here. So yeah, so squeak. So squeak, technically you have heard of people getting depressed in the summer because you've heard of people getting depressed and it's always summer there. Uh, I'm lucky that I have independence at my job and there's just a certain point I won't go beyond. Uh, be it amount of time spent on work or too much attention to detail. I just stop at a certain point and make sure to treat myself. There's a lot of stress, the job stress. Stuff. Oh, Dr. Juice. Yeah, absolutely. I have a lot other than, other than the train customers. I have a lot of independence. I don't have coworkers or anything. I have a supervisor who stops by maybe two or three times a week maximum. Uh, so I have what I consider to be a lot of independence. Yes, there are customers, but as a train station, they show up, they sit around and then they leave. Uh, are you still love summer as a kid, but now I uh, used to love summer as a kid, but now hate it. Summer in Texas. Is I, I think rocks. I think a lot of us loved summer as a kid, mostly because summer was freedom. You know, you had to go to school and you had to run this routine and then summer was freedom. So you figured out how to manage it. When you get into a working situation and you work all the time and you have to, you you have to plan your free time any time of the year. I think that's when you really start to discover how you feel about summer. I have a thing about summer that I, I, I strongly believe anybody who says that summer is their favorite season has access to a large body of water. Whether they, it's always the same thing. Whether they have a pool membership or they have a pool of their own or they have a beach house or they live near the beach and just go there all the time. There's always, that's always the common factor in people who love the summer is that they always have access to a large body of water, which I generally don't. So I, maybe that's one of the reasons I just don't like, I mean, I just don't like it because it's just unbearable all the time. Anyway, Floridians don't deserve like, I <laughs> uh, don't like being looked at. I prefer to be in my own bubble without people around. Yeah. Elements. I don't, I, I've come to accept being looked at. Um, sort no, well, no, not really. I no, I haven't. Who am I kidding? Whenever the, I, I had, a, I had an anxiety attack, uh, almost an anxiety attack months ago. Um, I was at work and there was these special tickets that went on sale. So there had in the small space of my ticket office and, um, my waiting room, I had about a hundred people, uh, standing in line waiting for the person to show up with the tickets. And I started to have an anxiety attack. Like I was on, I was on the brink of one. I almost got up and left with, with the station full of people. I almost got up and locked up all my stuff and walked out and drove away because it was just so much for me to handle. Cause I, cause and yeah, cause I felt the entire time that I sat there, I felt like they're just staring at me, waiting for me to work or something. And I couldn't work because I didn't have the tickets. Um, I have an odd anxiety thing that makes me have to have. That makes me have to talk to people to make an unfamiliar. Oh, I see what you're saying. Squeak. You like the idea of, or your body need your mind needs the idea of, I feel uncomfortable in this space. So as a reaction, instead of, uh, retreating, you run into it. Essentially you it's you're the, you're the person who's afraid of heights. So you get on the roller coaster. You're, you're uncomfortable with the situation. So the first thing you need to do is, is tackle the situation. That's a good way. That's a good, that's a good positive way to approach it. 
Uh, it, I can tell you right now, just talking about that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Uh, I usually stress out as soon as something is expected of me. Suave, I think that that's part of it. I think that there is uh, the idea that you are expected to do something. When you know, when I'm driving and people are behind me, I feel like they're expecting me to go faster and I'm holding up their day because I'm not driving that fast. When I have a deadline or something like that. The, the funny thing is that goes away when I have my own deadlines. When I set a timer for myself to do something... I have an easier time dealing with it because I know that I can do it at my own pace. Uh, I have social anxiety, so I know exactly how this feels. That's why I don't talk to people that much. Uh, I'm home all the time nowadays. Oh, Lady Foxheart, I'm jealous. <laughs> but I don't have somewhere to go. Oh, see, Lady Foxheart, I'm okay with that because I'll make somewhere to go. Uh, but again, when I when I make somewhere to go, I am operating on my own schedule at my own pace that that's why people always say like if you had the lottery or you had a lot of money what would you do this and that my answer is always whatever i felt like doing because whatever i felt like doing on that particular day it's my choice and i'm doing it at my pace and when i'm ready to stop i leave um hey rye uh okay i'm, I'm gonna try and catch i gotta jump ahead here because i'm trying to catch up um I remember summer being my favorite because school was out. Yeah. The one place that used to stress me out constantly. Now I like fall. Yeah. Fall is fall and spring. I, I, the idea of seasonal affective disorder, the idea that the season is messing with your head and, and putting you in a bad place. I feel like spring and summer are the, are the least common for that because they are the, depending on where you live, they are the least extreme of that you know i don't i like when it's nice and sunny weather i like 60 70 degrees i don't like 90 and 100 so i don't like the summer a lot i, I like 30 and 40 i'm not a huge fan of zero <laughs> you know what i mean but some people just find it unbearable so they don't like the winter because the winter is just an extreme version of that where we live anyway because we i live in the northeast which is kind of a temperate zone uh so we get all the seasons here Depression mostly mostly gets me when I'm alone, so I try talking to friends to distract me. Yeah, I, I get a little bummed out sometimes when I'm alone, but I know that the thing about me being alone is that I can remedy it myself. I can find something else to do. Uh, if I want to be around people, I can leave. If I don't want to be around people, I can stay. So I'm a. I think I'm. Sometimes I think I'm better off alone, other than when Beth is around, because I feel comfortable. That's how I know I love her, because I feel comfortable. Whether I'm feeling happy or sad, I'm comfortable being with her. So I, and, and that's, that's one of those ways that I just kind of know that, all right, this is, this is the person that I need to be with because we all have fair weather friends. We all have the people that they only see us when they're in a good mood, or we only see them when we're in a good mood. And when things go sour, we don't hear from them. You know, we, we all have that. And sometimes that's a good thing because not everybody is good to be around when you're feeling bummed out. Uh, jumping ahead, jumping ahead. I'm not good with being questioned with a deadline. Uh, as for stress, my mind has a really bad habit of overthinking. Yep. And stacking the tiniest things along with actual responsibilities and weighs them equally. So it feels like I have a lot more to do there. Yeah. Minion, that's one thing that I, um, uh, that I, I have learned to try and do is to sort out the things that I have to do and prioritize which ones. First of all, the, the, I think the most important thing is to prioritize which ones or sort out which ones actually have to be done and which ones you would just like to be done. You know, there's, there's, it's easy to sit there and say, Oh, I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to get this and I have to get that. And then when you actually sit down and you sort them out, half of those things are not have to, they're want to. And it's, it's important to uh, differentiate those things. That is, a, that is a very important, we talked about that before with the uh, gaming as an escape. And the important thing is to sort out what you have to do and what you want to do. I think the, one of the most important aspects of that, when you draw that line, 
between what you have to do and what you want to do. This is, this is one of the most important aspects of that. You need to understand that that line moves. Things go from side to side on that line. The line itself moves from side to side. Some people say, oh, well, uh, I, I need to sit, I need to sit uh, at home. I need to skip a day of work and, and play video games and just relax. And some people would say, no, no, you, you don't need to do that. You want to do that. And for the most part, usually you just want to do that. But when you're, when the stress gets so high that it's, it's affecting your health, it's affecting your job performance, it's affecting your, your life and your mental state in general, that line has moved. And now, no, you have to do that. You need that for yourself. And it's, it's important to see that, you know, in that, I think that that helps. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. Can't stand. I can't stand most people for too long. Not their fault. Just sick of the same people real quick. That happens. Swaff. Uh, I go to conventions. I've talked about how much I love going to conventions. I talked about that more than, more than a few times. Uh, one of the things I like about conventions is that it's a lot of rotating people. You know, you, you, depending on how long you're there, you don't see a lot of the same people twice. Uh, I do get away from the convention every once in a while because sometimes it is too many people. Okay. Uh, it is just too many people for too long a period of time, but I do like the fact that I can, even the people that I'm seeing a lot, I can meter out how much I am seeing them. Uh, yeah. Get into the habit of sorting things out so badly. Yeah. Especially a medical, medical bill BS. Uh, I used to crack under people's expectations or judgment, whether it was strangers or people I don't know personally, but I got a mean mug now. So people look at me and immediately look away. Yeah, that's a, a De Niro. That's a, a, a defense mechanism. Uh, I used to do that. I used to just sort of mean face it throughout the day or just neutral face. I, I think sometimes my neutral face looks like my mean face and like it's, it's called resting bitch face, which I don't know if there's a, I, that's, that to me is the guy version of it. But the idea was that they, or people would just leave me alone. Um, you don't need resting bitch face, though. I'm going to tell you the easiest way to do it. Uh, just put headphones in. <laughs> I, I, when I used to take the bus all the time, I used to take mass transit all the time. I can't tell you how many rides I've been on where I had my headphones in and the wire went right to my pocket where there was nothing. <laughs> all I was listening to everything around me, but nobody wanted to interact with me. Um, yeah, let's scroll a lot of the knee versus want too many people saying that the human can get by on life. Yeah. Mambo. Uh, uh, too many people think you can get by in life with just eat, breathe, poop and sleep. Exactly. And, and that's the thing. Like those, those things are needs, but relaxation, social interaction on some level, those are also needs. And people like to think that they're just wants. Uh, Greg, what do you do to deal with stress? Might be jumping ahead of your topic though. No, Suave, this is kind of what we're doing. Um, one of the reasons I'm talking, I, I, I'm talking about the different things that, that, that do stress me out because I'm talking about how they, how I also handle them. Uh, I separate myself from people when I have, um, uh, as far, as far as dealing with stress, as far as dealing with stress in a broader sense, uh, just whatever, whatever kind of stress comes my way. Uh, I do like to separate myself, um, Unfortunately, I have, I have years, if not decades of stress eating. Um, you know, when I have, it, it's dangerous because when you have a bad day, you go and you, you get something, you get comfort food to make you happy. But then when something good happens and you have a good day, you want to celebrate with a meal. So it becomes this dangerous cycle where food is tied to everything. So I am getting to a point where I'm trying to separate one from the other. Or at the very least, when it is time to stress eat, I'm trying to eat a little bit healthier. That does actually help. Um, I am trying to get out more and be more physically active. Uh, I, when we get depressed and we get, well, when we get stressed out, I should say, um, cause it, it, it's weird. It, they, they seem to go hand in hand, but they're not because depression is like lethargy. You know, when you're, when you're bummed out and you're feeling sad, uh, I like to get up and try and do something because being sad and depressed is the same thing as being tired and unmotivated, like physically unmotivated and physically tired. So I, I combat one by, com by changing the other. You know what I mean? I, I try and be active and that activity 
tries to remove the sadness. Stress is kind of the other way around. Stress is like your, your body is moving and your mind is moving so much and you need to calm it down. Uh, sometimes I will go out and I will try and take out that mental activity in a physical way. Sometimes I'll try and calm my body down and that will sort of calm, you know what I mean? Like when you've got a fever, you put ice packs on because you're trying to cool yourself down. It's sort of the same thing. I try and do that sometimes. Honestly, it there, there are two different ways to approach it and it really is just how I'm feeling that day and what I have access to. Sorry. Uh, I had an itch and I had to scratch it. Uh, jump ahead here, jump, well, jump back. I have a hard combination of liking to go experience new places, but going somewhere I'm unfamiliar with scares the crap out of me, so I have to go, someone to go with me. Yeah, I get that squeak. It, it's it's a weird sort of. Uh, I'm gonna use a, a, a five dollar word here, dichotomy. I think that's the right word, where it. it it has both aspects of itself. You know what I mean? It, it's it's two sides with on, on the same coin, like or you know both sides on one side of the coin. I don't know how to, I don't know exactly how to say it, but yeah, there's this weird idea that you like it and you're afraid of it. So going to do it helps cause stress, helps cause stress and helps relieve stress. It's very weird. Uh, I'm incredibly grumpy. I rarely smile, even if I'm actually happy. Elements, as long as you're, if you're actually happy, if there are moments where you're actually happy, that's a good thing. Uh, if you're not a smiler, you're not a smiler. Some people just aren't smilers. I have performing anxiety with video games. Uh, how to jump in the head, jump in the head, just to be topical. The Mario Tennis Aces demo I was playing was was stressful, but in a good way. Um, well, that bring that brings it around. Uh, uh, uh who is that? Uh, Sabir Ninja. That actually brings it around because uh, video games are a common way. Uh, if you're watching this stream and you found and you found me and you found SGB and all these guys on YouTube. Then you didn't, it's probably pretty common that you play video games to de-stress. That you you pop in a game and you and you take some of that out on on the video game, whether it's a whether it's an action game or you know you like something ultra violent or you like something uh, uh, puzzly or cutesy or or development sims and stuff like that. We you try and take your stress out on video games. Uh, there's that's always a really really good way to do it. I like that. I think the important thing, though, is to watch the moment where it becomes more stress. Um, and that's not always once you get angry. Uh, that's one thing that I am common with. Uh, we've talked about my salt streams where I play Splatoon and I'm just pretty much angry. And I, I will probably do some of those where I'm just... when I, I The way I play that game when you guys aren't around, when, I, when there's nobody around... Oh, I am like a rageaholic like, when it comes to that game. But I like that uh, because usually by the end of me playing it, I'm a lot more relaxed because I get all of that anger and stress out while I'm playing the game. If I was angry and if I got angry and then immediately stopped playing it, I would just be angry. But I play it and I, and I know I know where the line is and I know how to handle it. Don't play video games to the point where you get stressed out and you get angry and frustrated and you keep going and you know that it's only going to get worse. You know, I power through it because I know that it, for me, it, it gets better. Uh, it's been a long time since I played a game to de-stress. Uh, usually I only play them when I'm in a good mood now, so I actually enjoy them. It depends, Mambo. There's some games that are, are good for uh, Animal Crossing, uh, Stardew Valley stuff like that like they're very peaceful relaxing games if you're in a bad mood maybe you play some of those games you know just try them out that's and that's the, that's another point that i was going to make was there are different games for people you know there are sometimes puzzle trying to figure out a puzzle game helps people to get away from the problem and work on a new problem sometimes working on puzzle games frustrates people even more so stare clear of them Greg Gretzuko. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Gretzuko is actually a very, very good example of all of this. Um, 
Greg, you need to play Turf War more so you don't get... Uh, Ace Trainer, I get saltier in Turf War than I do in Ranked. Because Turf War is like the training ground for people since you have to play Turf War to get to a certain point to be able to play Ranked. And whenever people do like the Squid Party where they're not actually trying to fight, they're just running around and jumping around and stuff, it's always Turf War. Because they don't take it seriously. I rage out. Same thing in Smash Brothers. For glory and for uh, and for fun. I, I won't play for fun. Because they're not taking it seriously. And that's not what I'm here for. Uh, but Agretzico is pretty. Hey Aqua Sakura. Uh, Agretzico is, is pretty relevant. You know she has a lot of stress at her job and everything. So she takes it out on singing metal which which a lot of people would sing metal and and think that or hear metal and think that it's very aggressive and it gets your blood pumping and it's bad for you but in actuality you are de-stressing you're taking that energy that's building up from stress because that's what stress is stress is energy depression is like a, and, and sadness is like a lack of energy stress is energy and you need to figure out where to expend it sometimes and and i think that's probably the biggest point is that you need to expend your stress. Stress is... Stress is like a currency in a way. Stress is something that we have. It's... it's we have it and we use it. We use it to do things throughout our day. Stress can be very beneficial stress can be something that gets us motivated to to do our tasks at work stress is that thing that helps you that can sometimes help you focus when you're playing a video game sometimes well we'll there's another side to this but stress is that thing that you can you can spend in order to improve your performance there's that whole thing about stress is how coal becomes diamonds that's kind of relevant that that's 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 sort of what that means the problem is when you have too much stress. It's like a battery, a battery or an electrical device. Electrical device requires electricity, but too much electricity burns it out. Stress that's and that's where the danger is. When you when you're stressed out, you've got it's almost like pent up energy, whether it's mental, whether it's physical, it it is it's, it's energy buildup. And you need to get rid of it. So you need to figure out what is the best way for you to get rid of it what to spend your stress on because stress can be viewed like a currency where you can use it to make your performance better or you can spend it in the wrong place and and waste it uh so the idea is to use it you know if you're someone who if you're someone who stresses out you stress out you have a constant stress problem and one of your stresses is that you have put on weight or you are overweight Take that you could here's what you can do. You can take that stress and you can use it to motivate you right to the supermarket and buy a bunch of snacks and sit home and use that energy to eat all of those snacks and to be frustrated while you do it. Or you can spend that energy on going outside and going for a walk and going for a bike ride and going for a hike and doing all of these other things that that energy is now being put towards fixing one of the problems. That that stress, that that energy that you're using from that stress to fix the problem is beneficial. That's good currency. You're spending it wisely when you do that. And that's that's a good thing. That is something that I am trying to work on because I I have a bad habit of spending it in the wrong place. Um and that guy that messed around with Destiny 2 just messes with loadouts, head glitches, maps for and while my teammates are sweating, oh De Niro, that's you. <laughs> uh that's kind of the thing with anxiety and depression. They're normal and helpful emotions, but it can get to the point where it's causing dysfunction. Yeah. It's it's water. It's like water. Water's good for you. Water's beneficial. Water helps your system and your body, and everybody says stay hydrated. I got a robot that stops in here once an hour and says to drink water and stay hydrated. But you can drown. <laughs> You can, you can have so much water that you drown. You can drink so much water that it makes you sick. It's, it's actually a thing. I think it's called water toxicity or something. It, it, it is, these are good things for you. You know, all of these negative emotions that we feel, 
they are beneficial in a way. People don't like to be afraid. They don't like fear. But fear is what keeps you safe. Fear is what keeps you from walking out into the middle of the street and not getting hit by a car. Because otherwise, we just wouldn't be afraid. So we would just go and do it. The, these are beneficial things. And stress is that. And I, I, there are people who want to remove stress from their life completely. But you're kind of dodging it. You know, if you... If you're a recovering alcoholic and the way you manage that is for the rest of your life, you don't ever go to a party. You don't ever go to any place where there's alcohol. The second you see somebody with a beer, you don't talk to them. You're not so much dealing with the problem as you are avoiding the problem altogether. It's kind of healthy and it's kind of not. The What you need to do is to learn how to absorb what stress there is in life and turn it back outward and learn how to bounce off too much of it. You know, there, there are, you have to manage these things too much of a good thing can become a bad thing. Absolutely. And I, and rocks, the, the problem is that some people view certain things as only bad things. Stress can be beneficial, but it, if all you ever view it as is a bad thing, you will do everything in your power to avoid it and you will never understand the benefits of it. And then when stress finally does come along because it happens, you won't know how to deal with it. And that's kind of what this is. This is supposed to be a discussion about what causes stress, how to deal with stress, what are some of the beneficial ways, you know, I, I would love to hear what you guys do exactly when you're, when you're, when you have a stressful day and your, and your day is over, how do you remove more of that stress? Because that's a lot of the time what happens, you know, a lot of people say you got to leave that stress, you know, when you have stress at work, you got to leave it at work. It doesn't work that way. That's, that's pent up energy that you take with you when you leave. That's a, that's a, that's a, there's a tangible, almost tangible quality to that. What do you do when you have all of that extra energy? I end up just sleeping more. That's the other way. That's the way where you, you, you calm your body down. You, you, ra you relax your body and your mind relaxes along with it. I started playing darts at a local bar. Really fun. It helps me converse with people outside of work. Uh, that's a good one. I like that one. But, but ew, unqualified gamer. Sports? <laughs> uh, ooh, karate. I, I don't have, suave, I, I don't have the discipline for martial arts of any kind. I also don't have the, the stamina for it. <laughs> this may be a little personal, but I take antidepressants for anxiety, sleep, and depression. I've been taking them since 2013. Uh, Rye, are you on Ambien? Is, is, no, um, not Ambien. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, oh, I don't remember the other one. I'd be stressed by playing video games, working out, reading, hanging out, hanging out with you guys, and finally sleeping. Sleeping helps a lot. Yeah, I think sleep is one of the biggest things for people uh, I think that that is a good one that the, I think the idea is that you, you wake up rested and you, you have more energy to handle the stress. And that's a, that's a good way to look at it is that you, you'll have more energy to handle whatever stress comes. You basically recharge yourself, which is the old cliche. You know, you sleep and recharge your batteries. You know, we are, we are essentially big electrical devices. We run on electricity. We, we eat, we consume food and liquid for fuel and we burn it off and we have electrical impulses and when we go to sleep, we recharge, we, we reset ourselves. And the way I relieve my stress is, uh, playing video games sometimes make your, uh, make your breath of the wild because I can, oh, okay. Breath of the wild. Uh, I think doom can become part of that stress. Yeah. You get the, and, and real Chris, that's why I like Splatoon. I think that's why I'm so competitive with Splatoon. It's the it's the it's the most competitive game I've ever been that hooked on, and, and I get to I get to stress out. I get to relieve all that energy by playing that game. Uh, sometimes it's not healthy, but usually it is. Um, I've been considering streaming some to help me crawl a bit further out of my shell. Uh, Squeak, I can tell you that being on SGB a few times and now streaming, uh, does actually help. Uh, I am a little more comfortable talking on mic, I'm, which makes me a little more comfortable talking in person. 
it does help, but you need to be careful about how much stress streaming will cause, uh, how much stress it's going to cause you when the stream dies, how much stress is going to start setting everything up, uh, what's going to happen when you've got, you know, four or five viewers months later, you know, I, I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion you're going to be more popular than that. But there are, I've turned, I've tuned into streamers who, who very regularly have just a couple of people on a regular basis. You need to be careful because there is stress behind that. Um, so I think the, I think the most important, who was it? Was it Lizard that was here before uh, that was starting to stream and then just stopped because they, it, just, it wasn't for them? It might've been Lizard that was here. Uh, uh, take fluoxetine, hydroxetine, and fan apt. Okay, uh, Rye, I thought that last one said fan art, and I was gonna say I too look at fan art to relax me. <laughs> I was amazed that fan art comes in pill form now. When I was taking illegal substance, um. De Niro, I did that too. Uh, I went through a long, long, long period of time where I was a, I was a hardcore stoner. Oh, one, to be honest, one day I just stopped. One day I just, it just wasn't for me anymore, and I stopped smoking. And I was a hardcore smoker. <laughs> I have stories. <laughs> Actually, uh, there was at a bar and brought my switch. Oh, all qualified gamer, you're that guy. You, you brought the switch to the rooftop party, didn't you? <laughs> oh, uh, there's a few people at the bar. Everybody who saw the switch had a chance to play. Yeah, it, it is fun, Bruce. Uh, I'm, uh, I know him as Bruce, but he's an unqualified gamer. Um, it is fun. I'm a vegetarian, so I'm more likely to have a B6 deficiency. Oh, okay. I saw that squeak. You have to take a B6. Uh, as I stopped, it went completely out of whack. Oh, okay. Okay. And that, and that's another thing. Um, that's another thing when it comes to uh, dealing with all of this stuff, dealing with stress. Don't be afraid to acknowledge that you have what is essentially a physical condition that needs to be treated. If you have chronic stress and your job is not that super duper stressful and you live, you live alone or only with one or two people, if you can't nail down what it is that's stressing you out, there's a good chance that you've got a chemical deficiency. It may be something in your diet that you need to change. It may also be a, med a medication that you need to take. Don't be afraid of that. Mm, excuse me. Try, you know, go, go to the doctor. Tell them this is what's happening. There may be something physically there. You know, if somebody had a broken leg, you wouldn't look and said, oh, my leg hurts and my leg's broken. You wouldn't look at them and say, oh, I would just walk it off. You'd be fine. They have a physical problem. If you have a chemical deficiency, if you have something going on inside your body that you're not aware of, that is also a physical problem. <laughs> Take a medication for it. Speak of the devil, lizard shows up. Doesn't Wawa help you lessen your stress? Uh, it can. Um, Wawa chocolate milk specifically helps me lessen my stress. Hel le helps me lessen my stressing. <laughs> I will tell that person to walk off a broken leg. <laughs> yeah, you're probably fine. It, it's all in your leg. You, you, you'll walk it off. You'll be okay. Uh, growing with Asperger's was and is still a challenge. Uh, either way, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I, I want rye. It's interesting. That's an interesting uh, aspect of it. Um, I, I don't. I can honestly tell you that I've met a few people with Asperger's and and various forms of autism. And I've never heard anybody say it that way. I never heard anybody uh, treat it as it was a benefit. And and that's an interesting way to look at it because they most, of the, I would imagine 99% of the time, they have people around them telling them that it is a detriment, that it is, it is something that is negative that needs to be fixed. But I guess something like Asperger's or various forms of autism could actually just be seen as you view the world differently and quite frankly, that's what a lot of people need to do nowadays. You know, whether or not it's some sort of, of medical, medically classifiable condition, I think a big problem now is that people need to look at the world differently. 
They need to reassess what it is that they're seeing and what their role is in it. Everybody thinks that they're supposed to be these workhorses and they're supposed to get everything done and take care of everything. And a lot of us just play support roles. And that's, that's what we're there for. And I think that people would benefit more if they thought about it. You know, I, one of the reasons, um, that I take the name silver, uh, I've, I've always, I've used the name silver in names, uh, like screen names and character names and stuff for a long time is because that it is viewed as second place. You know, there's gold and then there's silver, which is always considered second place. Um, I, I kind of like that because I like that for myself because I, I am good, but I, I can be better. And that keeps me trying to be better. Um, whether it's as a person or in some kind of comp, you know, like I said, as far as competition goes, that's kind of what silver means. I also like it because not only am I the next step up for the person in bronze, I am hot. I try to be hot on the heels of the person in gold because that motivates them. Uh, if you ever, if you ever heard the term catfishing, we all know catfishing is that thing where people, they pretend to be someone else online and they sucker somebody into it. Uh, if you ever looked up the story of the catfishing, it's because there were these, these eels or something that they would ship or these fish or something. And then the fish, when they shipped them, they would die in transit because they weren't swimming around. So they would put a catfish in with them and the catfish chasing them and trying to eat them motivated them to keep moving. Uh, so that, you know, and that, that's kind of what I like. I like the idea that, uh, while I know that I still have somewhere to go, I, I like to also try and push people forward, whether they are behind me or whether they are in front of me. I like to try and keep the group moving in a positive direction. And that's why I always like that. And that also helps take my stress out. I, I, I like coming on here and I like talking to you guys and I like thinking that I can help you guys out with some issues because when all is said and done, and I've been like that since high school, believe it or not, when all is said and done and, and you, if you can project to me that anything that I said helps, that makes me feel better. I feel less stressed out because whatever's going on in my day, I feel like it led me to that moment where I can help you out. Uh, my biggest challenge with having autism is being talked down to. <sighs> Lizard, I, I would imagine that that problem is more significant for you than it is for, uh, for what is, what's the term? Um, neurotypicals is the, it's a term. I, I hope that that's not insulting because that's the term that I've heard. Um, neurotypicals, which is the, the, the non autism, non Asperger's or anything like that. Um, I would imagine that that problem is worse for you than it is for neurotypicals, but we do, we, uh, we get it too. You know, there is that sensation of don't like being talked down to it's, it's demeaning. It's insulting. Um, like I said, I imagine that it is worse, but that is something that we can commiserate with. We, we do, we have that in common on some magnitude. We have that indigo. Uh, play monster and I met some great people from all over the world. I may never meet them personally, but I still may remember. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with uh, nothing wrong with meeting people online. I, I love that when I love when people know you call, don't meet people online. You got to meet them in person. Not really. You, you meet them online. They they are people. They are if anything, they are people who are stripped away of the mask of their physical appearance, and now you get to meet the person behind the person. I like meeting people online. I, I like interacting with people. Uh, the important thing to understand is that some, when you watch someone's videos and you comment on their videos, that is not meeting them. <laughs> interacting with them is meeting them. Uh, Discord. Uh, hold on, jumping ahead, jumping ahead. Um, most people have some sort of mental disability. Well, Suave, I don't know that most people have what I would consider a mental disability, but I think that by our very nature, none of us are exactly the same. There are typical behaviors and then there are atypical behaviors and, and not behaviors, um, statuses, 
maybe it may be the right word for it, situations like you know what i mean like current conditions there are typical current conditions and then there are different ones and i think that there is a a, a norm but even in that norm there are variants so it's everybody's different is is the is the most simple version of that idea and that is you know we all go through stress but we all view that stress differently you know there there's a lot to that uh, i have asperger's as well and the people who know me are surprised when i tell them because they would never expect it but they also don't think of me any different. What does get to me is people throwing around autism as an insult. Yeah, I, I don't see the autism as an insult thing anymore, uh, Minnow. Uh, not as much anyway. Well, not really much at all. Because I think that mental mental illness has be, has come to the forefront. Uh, and has been coming to the forefront of, of discussion for a long time now. Well, for a few years now. Uh, so I think that we are getting away from that. I think that it is making it easier to find anybody who is a jerk because they're saying, you know, they're, I won't use the word, um, the, the R word. Uh, I, I know that we used to use, uh, I I'm comfortable just saying the R word now. I don't have to say it in front of everybody. Um, there is a time, there was a time when that was a common insult or a common, cause it wasn't always an insult. It was normally just like, if something is dumb, that was a common word to use. Now we don't use it. Now the people who still use it, eh, they're, it's time to wake up. Um, gay is a poor insult. I, I've always, I, I get a kick out of people using gay as an insult because it's like, I don't, I don't understand it. It, it has sex with its own gender. I, I don't, with, <laughs> like, this is, the show's gay. Like, the, the, is it having sex with somebody? I, I'm not aware of what's going on. I mean, if you want to see, if you want to see gay shows, I, I've got, I've got links that I can give you. <laughs> Has been by normal. Yeah, uh, Mambo, that's actually really, that's an interesting point that what we consider normal, what, what society wants to consider normal, those are usually the people causing trouble. <laughs> E-Zero, what is happening? My old friends used to use that a lot on me. Yeah, Shadow. Yeah, see, that's all. That's that, and, and it's an insult now. It really is. Fun fact: in Mexico, people say "gay" as a word for that's very lean. Oh, okay. They use it as a as a different kind of derogatory word, basically. Like it's stupid. We're all we're all just a little gay. Eh, some some less little than others. Uh, I'm on the opposite end. Words have different contexts depending on the use. Context is what makes something offensive. Yeah, Swaf, uh, context is what makes something, uh, offensive or not offensive. But sometimes there are some words that it's easier just to avoid altogether because you don't know how somebody's going to take it. And one big thing that you need to understand is that how you mean something may not be construed perfectly in the way you say something. So where, while you mean something, someone else may have heard it a different way. So the easier thing is just to not say anything at all. A bitch, please can be used as an insult or a retort. Yeah, if you if you say bitch, please, you're, it sounds like you're calling them a bitch, but it's like, no, as as one grouping, it's normally pretty well accepted. I think that's one of the kind. That's the kind that's that's normally relatively accepted. But yeah, oh, you know what? Uh, you know what, Shadow? That's a good example. That's a good example of what I just said. When you say a uh, bitch, please, you're not insulting the person. Yeah, it's just a comical way of saying, "Oh, come on." But somebody who doesn't know you, somebody who doesn't understand that phrase, their first thought may be, "What did you just call me?" In it, so you know what I mean. So it's easier. Um, true, but at what point do you draw the line? I draw the line, at, and the R word is is actually very is a very good marker for this because the the R word is probably one of the biggest gray areas for this. I draw the line at words that have no other purpose than to be insulting. 
the reason I, I think that the R word is, and I'm going to say the R word here because I want you to understand because this is, this is why I think of it. To call someone a retard is an insulting term. But the word itself became an insulting term because it has a different definition. The the word the word re, retard is 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 a uh, a verb. Yeah, the R word. Oh my god, um, it's a verb. It means to stunt the growth of something, to to to, to damage it in some way. If I take a plant and a plant is growing and I put a slice into the bottom of it a little bit, don't cut it all the way through. I put a slice into it. It has trouble growing. That would be the verb there. The word there is to retard its growth. There is another purpose to that word, but that purpose has been lost. And now we only know it as the sort of insulting term. That's why I cut that word out. But there was a word before that. You know, that is the word that it used to be. When someone says, if I go to the zoo and look at monkeys, monkeys, depending on how you use it, is a racially insensitive term. It's an insulting term. But I'm not going to stop going to the zoo and referring to them as monkeys. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go to the zoo and say, look at the M words. They're monkeys. Yes, the word has an insulting uh, context somewhere else. But the way I'm using it is, is clearly not that. When, it, when a word transcends whatever it normally was and becomes only an insult, that's where I'll draw the line. Damn, is banned in school. Uh, yeah, when, Shadow, that's, a, that's an old thing. When I was a kid, they used to try and say damn was a curse word too. Uh, it's like the N word. You might use it a lot as a kid when you get older. and stuff. Yeah, be, you know what rocks? Uh, this is why they people say um, um, black people can use the N word and white people can't because in in black urban culture the word has a different meaning. What they're it's not even just that they're spelling it differently. That word means something else. Unfortunately, typically it came from a different word that was when other people used it they used it as an incredibly derogatory term. So that's why no one else can say it. It, it really is just that simple. I, I don't understand why it's so much more complicated than that. I draw the line and saw at like autism as an insult or the N word. Does a group associated with the word you're using see it as offensive? Then it shouldn't be used. Yeah, the men, no, that's a good line. Uh, if the, if the people you are, in, you are implying or you are, um, not insinuating. Um, I'm trying to think of the word. The, the people you are conjuring up. <laughs> the, the image of the people you're conjuring up. Uh, there's a better way to say that. I know there is. Uh, if that group of people has a problem with it, then you stop doing it. Uh, I have talked before about how I don't like the word handicapped. I like, or I like, I don't like the word disabled. I like the word handicapped. But disabled people have decided that they don't like the word handicapped, so I'm not going to say it. I, I prefer the word handicap because a handicap means you are capable, but with a, uh, uh, with something that makes it more challenging. Uh, I was always a fan of physically challenged. Um, disabled means doesn't work. And I don't like referring to disabled. Uh, I, like I said, I say disabled people because disabled people want me to say that, but I don't like that as a word because it makes it sound like they're incapable of doing something. And most disabled people are live very capable lives, but that's the word they want to use. So they, so I use it out of respect. It gets its own meaning in the form of a bad situation. Like you retire or this video game boss is retired. Yes, Suave. And, and when that definition overrides the negative definition, I'll accept it. But for right now, unfortunately, it really kind of doesn't. And there are better words to use. There are easier words to use. Yeah, the N word in the black community in the black, and I say the and when I say the black community, I say black urban community. I do say black urban community because outside of the urban community, uh, a lot of uh, members of the black community don't like it. They they they, do, they they also see it as a derogatory word. So I usually say black urban community because that is usually where it's very prevalent. Uh. 
Greg, can we talk about the worst? Uh, isn't it usually just said with an A? Yeah, J Punk. It, it, it's the A instead of the hard R. Um, can we talk about the worst thing, like how someone got someone torched a girl because uh, the, the, with the girl with the Chinese dress? Yeah, we we talked about that before. Chinese people said that they liked it. There was the girl that wore a Chinese dress and, and it looked great on her, and the people were upset. People were upset for for Chinese people, and and I and I do mean Chinese people, not just Asian community, because it is Chinese specifically, the origin of the dress, and people were upset for them, and it's like. Well, what did what did people from the Chinese community say? They loved it. They thought it was a great dress. <laughs> All right, you officially have no reason to be mad. Uh, handicap used to be an insult. Yeah, Ace Trainer, and that's why that's why it fell out of uh, it fell out of the lexicon because it be, it became an insulting word. Uh, so they decided not to use it. I, like I said, I still because by by definition of what the word means, I prefer that word, but. The people who are disabled don't want me to use that word, so I don't use that word. It it's literally that simple. It, we have the same issue with with um, gender equality. The whole thing with using they instead of he or she. Just use the damn word. <laughs> I don't understand what the problem is. Use they. It's fine because you know what? Because they are w want you to say they. So just friggin' do it. All racist words need to cease to exist. No, I would say all racism needs to cease to exist. Uh, I, I think that that is probably the most important thing. Unfortunately, racist words perpetuate racism. Uh, get people being mad for you. Oh. <laughs> but we've just, by the way, we've jumped all over. Uh, Siberian Ninja, we do that all the time here. Um, we do that all the time, but you know what? You know what, Siberian Ninja? This is all a source of stress for some people. <laughs> so, so we we have looped back around. Um, what about using the word "be" instead of "is"? That's interesting, crazy old gamer. I, I've never heard that argument. But well, that 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 issue before using "be" instead of "is." Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I would need to see more on that argument. Or oh, people got pissed at Mario Odyssey wearing... Oh, they're wearing the sombrero. Yeah, because it was racist against Mexicans. Meanwhile, Mexicans thought... Of course, they thought it was hilarious. You know why? Because what I've always heard about Mexico is that they're not walking around wearing bright, colorful, giant sombreros. <laughs> Everybody has this, like, this, this Cinco de Mayo image of Mexican people. And it's like, you know what they wear? T-shirts and pants and shorts and jackets. And, well, probably not jackets because it's hot. But... <laughs> You know, regular hats, like baseball caps and stuff. That's probably what they usually wear. <laughs> I say they just trans people who are fine, chill. But if they're going to be jerks. Uh, <laughs> I don't like the term cis, by the way. I don't even know what that is. Lizard, I've talked about that before. My understanding of the original, of the original term cis meant something different than, than what I thought it did. I, I identified as cis because I thought that what it was was that you have explored the idea of your sexuality and straight is who you are. You know, when we when we when we see people who are who have different sexualities, atypical sexualities, I, I, I would probably say uh, what society considers to be it used to consider to be atypical. Um, there, there was this idea that they explored who they are and that's where they ended up. I am someone who, to be 100% honest, explored who I was in that sense and landed on straight. Like, that's where I ended up, mostly. Um, that's where I ended up. That was my understanding of what cis meant. So when you said, you know, you said gay or you said bi or you said any of this, my understanding was I was cis because I have explored the notion of sexuality and that was where I ended up. Apparently now it's becoming a term that means you're a jerk. So I'm not going to say that anymore. Awesome. And people make it wear clothes like everyday people. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Um, the stereotype clothes. Yeah. 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 I, you know, as far as the back to the sombrero thing, like as far as, you know, it, like Mexican people thought it was funny and people here thought it was racist or whatever. Think about cowboy attire. 
When you see other cultures wearing cowboy attire, they're not insulting America. They are assimilating it to their own culture because they like it. Why is that so hard for anybody to understand? Do you think discrimination of any kind will ever end? No, uh, I don't think discrimination of any kind will ever end because people like to feel like they belong. And if we were, if we were all the same color and we were all the same race and we all came from the same place, we would differentiate each other by which side of the island we live on because people need to feel like they belong. And it's a, it's a sad, sad truth. That's why what this world needs is an alien invasion so that we can all feel like we're members of the same culture, Earth, or the same planet, instead of a bunch of separated people. Yeah, that's a, I, I mean, that's, that's a comical approach to the idea, but it really is kind of true at the same time. I work with a lot of Hispanic folks and they're just like me. Yeah, because, you know why they're just like you, Lizard? Because they're human beings. <laughs> Mental gender matched up with your biological sex. Yes, yeah, I don't know, Squeak. I don't know if that's what it is or not. People who tell others to speak their language because... Oh, yeah, Siberian Ninja, that is ridiculous. Uh, by the way, we're running super long today. We're pro I'll probably split this whole thing up into, into two parts when we when we get to that. We normally have the, uh, the viewer topics, but we haven't split, so... Um, Think all bisexuals like guys and girls the same way? No, that's not. No, yeah, Shadow, that's not true at all. There, there are different degrees of how we like everything. Anime thinks all Americans are cowboys for some reason. Uh, Cyberwolf, and Americans think all Japanese people walk around in kimonos. It, it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's, it's all about the, the, the narrow window that we choose to see people in. You know, when most of the world thinks of America, <laughs> California's over here. Let me let me let me line this up for you guys. California's over here, Texas is right here, New York is right here, and that's all there is. That's all of America. When when the rest of the world thinks about what Americans are, it is one of those three groups of people. <laughs> SJWs and all rights people are all different colors, offensive and politically correct people. A few years ago, it was Americans and Russians. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Suave, the idea there is that people, those, those groupings of people that we have now, like people say, oh, well, where did all these genders come from? Where did all these groupings of people come from? Come from? They were always there. We're just now seeing it for them for ourselves. I think we're seeing a lot of things for ourselves now. Uh, the only thing I draw the line is with blackface. I don't care how you slice it. It's racist. Uh, unqualified gamer. I, I would say that it's not always racist because I, I think uh, the case in point was that girl who dressed up the, the, I think she was white and she dressed up as Michonne. From Walking Dead and she did blackface and people, they gave her crap about it. I don't think that she meant anything raci racially charged by it. But it's sort of like we were talking about with the wor with wording before. There are people who use that in a negative way. So maybe just don't do it at all. <laughs> yes, you didn't mean anything by it. But other people do. So just don't do it. You know, if you want to have a bonfire on your on your front lawn, go for it. You want to have a little fire pit, go for it. Maybe don't make it in the shape of a cross. Wah, wah. Uh, Greg, check Discord when you can. Uh, let me open Discord. Uh, so, Greg, what about people saying you're wrong for liking Pokemon Go? Uh, they can say whatever they want to say. Just don't be insulting to me for it. Uh, there we go, yeah. Texas Mega. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to watch that. Uh, 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 sorry, I, I had to jump over to Discord real quick. In Mexico, blackface is a little popular form of media. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> the problem isn't what's right or wrong. It's people always trying to impose on others a doctrine or way of thinking. 
No, E zero. I think there is a. I I think essentially there is a right and wrong. Um, I think that the right and wrong shifts based on what is going on in society. But you're right that there is an issue of people trying to impose their way on other people. Uh, but I think that the. I think that typically the masses, uh, are getting it kind of right. Uh, let's see. I stopped trying. To, I stopped trying to change the world a long time ago. I watched the world go by. It's just... Suave, yeah. I, I mean, to to loop back around to the stress conversation, I, I I do think that I'm at a point where I am just ready to check out of society completely. I mean, I have said multiple times this. I have said this to people. I have said it out loud. I think I've even said it to Beth a couple of times. If it wasn't for her and Sage, there's a good chance that I would sell everything. I would sell my house. I would sell uh, a good portion of my video games. I would sell most, of, pretty much all my furniture. I would sell my house and I would go buy a van and live in a van or something. And, and that would be it. Like I, I would, I would do, I would interact with society as little as possible. And you can call it retreating. You can call it checking out. It is what it is, and I think I'm. I think I'm at that point where, you know, I. I joke, and at the same time, I don't. But I have thought about quote unquote running away more as an adult than I ever have as a child. <laughs> uh, I live in a van down by the river, and you know what? You live in a van down by the river. I bet you're super happy. Um, uh, reading through some comments here. Oh, why does that last night? Why does that last night on Twitter? It feels like it feels as though. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. Well, yeah, I said on Twitter that it feels like we're becoming a dystopian society. One of the, that was related to something else. That was related to the idea of. Uh, like, you know, the dystopian societies, like V for Vendetta, where if you want to express art and music, you have to hide in a bunker somewhere. Like, I sometimes I feel like that's where we're going. But that was related to something different. Who knows? Maybe a different life. Maybe a different uh, episode. Greg going for that tiny house. Now, I don't like the tiny house life because the tiny houses are way too small. But I do like the, if you've ever seen people who, who they buy like a bus, like a coach bus, and they live on the bus. I like that whole community of people who live in vans t rv trailer tiny houses yeah it, and and i do at squeak i love that idea i love the idea that i can literally just when when things are getting rough i just drive away from it yes it is it is an escapey kind of behavior but sometimes you gotta get you gotta escape for a little while okay we have uncle silver antarctica bunker Pfft, i wish if i had one though suave you would all be invited to watch my stream from it alone <laughs> you would you would be invited until i turn the computer off a few dozen years on a war black plague yeah we'll, we'll be yeah we'll be all we'll be in antarctica in no time I'm dropping water all over myself here look at john carpenter's the thing Uncle Silver, when are you going to come to California to hang out? When I can get on a plane. I'm terrified of planes. Um, I really enjoy this chat. You guys are the greatest chat I've been on. Yay! Unqualified Gamer, that's what we're here for. We're, we're here We're here to, to help you de-stress. We're here to let you get your voice heard in, a, in, you know, in words. Uh, hello, fatty. Hello there. <laughs> I, I'll I'll like the it's a little hurtful, but I'll accept it. Uh, if you if you want to go ahead and yeah 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 sub that'll that'll make me feel much better. Uh, pre master race dudes need to chill out about their four K sixty frames per second. Why can't you all just live on? I don't even smoke weed. Yeah, I used to swab those are the old days. You actually come to the Netherlands and smoke weed with me. Oh my god, I always wanted back in my back in my old uh, pot days. That was always the dream. Hamster Geek, how you doing? Oh, look at the new new people stopping by in chat. I love it. A poo from The Simpsons used to be acceptable, and now he isn't. Yeah. 
you know, and that is what it is. Who, who was, oh my God, it was, um, people were, they were talking about how they didn't know how to handle it. Um, and they were trying to say like, oh, well, we don't know. We don't know how to adjust the show accordingly or do anything like that. And then Looney Tunes had a disclaimer that they made because their cartoon, if you've ever watched Looney Tunes cartoons, they are wildly insensitive by today's standards, uh, especially like old Bugs Bunny cartoons and stuff. And they put a thing in front of their cartoons. Hang on. Uh, here, here's the. This is this is going back to the uh, to the like racially ra racial and and you know pronouns and stuff, just acceptable words and, and behaviors and things like that. Uh, this is in in a disclaimer that that Warner Brothers had made for their Looney Tunes cartoons. Uh, these cart the cartoon you are about to watch, you are about to see the cartoons you are about to see are products of their time. They may depict some of the ethnic and racial prejudices that were commonplace in American society. These depictions were wrong then and are wrong today. While the following does not represent the Warner Brothers view of today's society, these cartoons are being presented as they were originally created because to do otherwise would be to view would uh, would be the same as claiming that these prejudices never existed. We don't deny we don't deny that the that these behaviors used to exist and that these prejudices used to exist and to act like they didn't exist is insulting but it is also time to move forward it it, it really is just that simple uh yeah i no longer see yeah siberian ninja a lot of them will uh years and years ago because i love looney tunes i i i think um uh uh roadrunner cartoons are, are my favorite uh, i think that they're freaking hilarious when i was a kid uh there used to there was a roadrunner cartoon where the coyote went off the cliff and he had a backpack so he opened up the backpack and he took out uh medicine like like aspirin he took out aspirin and he would take the aspirin because it was going to hurt when he fell. Probably late 90s, early 2000s, I would see that cartoon. They edited out the moment where he took the pills because it looked like drug use. And, and they, they were afraid kids would emulate that. So they took that out. It's a little weird, but, you know, they still ran the cartoon. But nowadays, yeah, for some of that stuff, they just don't show them anymore. Some schools never talk about some, uh, shadow, most school, if there were anything like my schools, most schools never tackle that sort of thing. They never approach those issues. And at the same time that I think that they should, I understand why they don't because it is a difficult situation. I mean, I I'm looking at this and I'm thinking of this entire episode right now. And once it turned into all of that stuff, I am questioning how much of this somebody might take offense to. And I did my, I do my very best to not offend anybody. And I never in, at the very least, I try and make it obvious that I don't intend to insult anybody or offend anybody. But I constantly am thinking, I know I said something wrong. I know I got, I know I got something that I said wrong. And those are the issues. Those are the situations where, don't be don't be a jerk about it, but let me know. Let me know if I, I if I put if I use the wrong term, if I use an insulting term. And uh, no, 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 there was an offensive racial term for Japanese people in World War II that cracked me up. Uh, I think I know the one that you're talking about. Uh, a lot of prejudices are being reborn in the kids of society nowadays. Yeah, because because they're not teaching it. Awesome, they're not teaching it and. It's not being learned. That's the, that's the point of learning history is that you're not supposed to repeat it. And they're repeating it. A lot of, unfortunately, there are a lot of behaviors that society is repeating because they forgot that they happened at all. Mm, Tom and Jerry is still to this day one of my favorites. Oh my God, Tom. Yeah, Tom and Jerry is great. Tom and Jerry had a few, uh, uh, what we would consider to be insensitive moments. But ultimately, it's a hilarious cartoon. I love it. 
And I think, you know, don't shut people out immediately. Communicate and talk to them. Oh yeah, yeah, suave. And that's I'll never cut everybody off completely. When I say when I say I'm getting to that point where I'm ready to cut people out, uh, I'm ready to cut them out physically. I'm ready to stop going places. I'm ready to not have a car so I don't have to be on the road to, because uh, because everybody driving faster than me is trying to kill themselves and kill everybody, and everybody driving slower than me got their license at Pet Boys and needs to learn how to drive. <laughs> that's it's like it's like playing an online game i'm the only one doing it right <laughs> oh just pray your channel never becomes popular enough for people to bother watching the archive talk show hey they can go ahead well my archives don't last longer than two months <laughs> Uh, here in Mexico, the government wants to teach math in public school. Uh, oh, by the way, like I said, we, we didn't have a break in the middle. We just kind of trailed off. So this was probably just going to be one big thing. We'll probably just move into viewer topics. Um, want to teach math in public school until the sixth grade and then, uh, E zero. And then they want to stop teaching math. If I can assume that certain offensive word does it start with the z and end with head <laughs> let's talk about fire emblem <laughs> all right all right indigo let's talk about let's talk about fire emblem a little bit here uh uh tell me how fire emblem is racially insensitive <laughs> do it nah just messing around I can use emojis on Twitch. Uh, you can use the emojis that are built in. And then if you, uh, Cyber, if you subscribe, you get to use the Derposaurus emoji or the Sage emoji. <laughs> we got pride emotes. Well, those emotes, once you, once you sub to a channel, those emotes, you can use anywhere, I believe. It would be idiotic to take math away. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh... Oh, no, they start teaching it at sixth grade. Ugh, that's horrible. <laughs> math is offensive to religious people. <laughs> to... I'm not even going to do it. I was going to make a joke, and I'm not even going to do it. <laughs> one plus one equals the devil. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure somewhere in the world being called Lu Lucina is offensive. Yeah, they go, they go all the all the uh, uh, insensitive fire emblem comments. <laughs> um, you know what? Uh, we got a half an hour left here. Uh, why don't we switch gears here? Uh, somebody mentioned Pokemon. Yeah, why don't we, why don't we just do the? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll we'll this is normally the normally the viewer topics portion starts at. Four, uh, if we we do an hour an hour of topic and then an hour of viewer topics, but we always kind of go off the rails, so we always end up wherever. Um, someone wants to. Oh, we're we're talking Pokemans. Uh, so Pokemon is coming out next year on the Switch. Yes, Pokemon is coming out next year on the Switch. Pokemon is also coming out on the Switch this year. Pokemon is also out already on the Switch now, because as long as the game is about Pokemon. It's a Pokemon game. <laughs> we they don't it, it it's not like Pokemon Let's Go is is some sort of horrible uh uh version of the mainline series. It's a it's a side series. It's it's something else. That's what it's supposed to be. It and it always was that and that's when I actually said it when the leak happened. You know, is there a possibility that this game is not the mainline game, but is a spinoff? Which is exactly what it was. Uh, Uncle going to get Pokemon Eevee. I, to be honest, awesome. I accept the game 100%. And I still don't know if I'm going to get it. it. Essentially, it looks like Pokemon Let's Go in game form. Instead of going out on the street. I stay out, I stay at home and I play a game. Hold on a second. I had a really good day. All right. And I wanted to share. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, 
You good? <laughs> I'm just playing with your hair. Okay, go go for it. Go for it. You can you can you can touch my hair. Touch my hair. Oh, can I? Touch my hers. You know, with uh, my, see, you're, you're gonna with my hair tie. Uh, excuse me, that's my hair tie. My I, hair I tie. have, uh, I I'm have the one with the brown hair. I have house. conquered that hair tie myself. Uh, Pika Blue. Uh, oh, hey, with that new Pokemon that came out that turned out to be, uh, like the what the heck is it called? It's it's like the new ROM of the game that was never released. Was po was Pika Blue in there? Maybe Pika Blue was always the rumored Pokemon. Is he in there? <laughs> oh, ooh, this is getting racy. <laughs> so, so suave, uh, Greg, I find your love offensive. <laughs> um, the space, the space world ninety seven. Yeah, it's Pika Blue in there. Um, but yeah, it, 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 the whole thing with with Pokemon, like, it's fun. It's it's you're. Let's be clear here. You're not owed. Anything. This is, this goes out to the people who are furious over Let's Go and and will will not accept it and furious over Quest. Y you are not owed anything. <laughs> you have had decades of fun games to play, and that you have signed into on your own. Nobody forced you to play them. You bought the games. You are not owed anything. They don't owe you only mainline games and they don't have the right like i just i don't understand like i don't remember people freaking out when those pokemon ranger games came out i don't remember people freaking out when pokemon rumble or snap people who love pokemon snap that was not a mainline pokemon game nobody freaked out because everybody accepted that it is not part of the mainline series it is a spinoff and you can do whatever the hell you want in a spinoff so why does this one bother everybody so much what about that oddly adorable cat Pokemon? Well, that's a big thing uh, that uh, rocks that people are now seeing some of the adorable Pokemon that never got to be and kind of wishing they existed. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Swab. I'm sorry to offend you with my with my Pokemon uh, discussion. Uh, for those worrying less about forced motion controls, there is a moment in the trailer where the player throws the ball in handheld with no touch. Yeah, I, I do have a lost subject. Uh, uh, hello, by the way. Uh, I do have a problem with forced motion controls just because we've had to deal with that twice, three times so far, really. Uh, four times if you count the DS and the 3DS separately. But yeah, we, we keep having to be forced into it. But it's it's one aspect. Like, it's... Like if if you're going to see everything that was cool about Pokemon Let's Go and say, "Oh my God, I have to flick the the the, the controller. This is stupid." Are you not paying attention to to ninety eight percent of the rest, like the other ninety eight percent of the trailer and and the information? You really you're you're gonna you're gonna chuck it all because you're gonna focus on one thing that you have to do. Come on, you you're these are the people who when when the prequels were coming out um well after the prequels came out when they announced episode 7 actually when they announced episode 7 of Star Wars and there were people who were pissed off like oh they're going to ruin they're going to ruin the series they're going to ruin Star Wars these are they were the same people who hated the original trilogy the the uh the prequel trilogy and thought that Star Wars was ruined anyway so don't go see it <laughs> don't don't worry. What are you complaining about? Nobody's forcing you to play it. Pokemon Let's Go is terrible. All right, don't don't buy it. Just, that it. I just don't understand why it's not that simple. <laughs> yeah, but also, the motion controls look more immersive, and I think that's the idea. Elements. I think that it's supposed to be more immersive, but if it's not immersive, if you don't like it, if you do it and you just get tired of it, just switch it back. As long as you can switch it back, that's probably the closest I can get to an, a complaint about all of that, about all of the Pokemon Let's Go. And again, it's a minor complaint. And if it was a major complaint, I simply wouldn't buy the game. It's, it's just that simple. I, I, I just, I, I don't know. It, it just bothers me when I see that. And, and, it's, and I'm, a, I'm a huge Metroid fan. And I thought that Federation Force... Uh, when that was announced, I was I was disappointed, uh, you know. But I was the the easy answer was okay. I'm not gonna play it. I, I 
the the complaint about when Federation Force came out was that it was going to be used. It could theoretically have been used as an assessment of what people wanted from the Metroid series. And if the game did poorly, they were going to say, okay, people don't want Metroid anymore. No one's going to not, no one's going to look at Pokemon Go and see bad numbers and think people don't want to play Pokemon anymore. That's not going to happen. The same people who don't like the new, oh my God, the new Thundercats. Oh my God, the new Thunder. Okay, I, I, you know what? We, I'm, t- I'm going to talk about the Thundercats. I'm, I'm going to discuss this because there are, I am on both sides of this argument, uh, which is very unique. I think that the new Thundercats animation looks ridiculous, but I'm okay with that because that's an art style choice. I don't need everything to look like a, a high end anime. I don't need everything to look like, okay, go. I, I'm comfortable with all different kinds of art styles, so I don't mind it. I am a little annoyed that the Thundercats looks like that. Uh, I remember the Thundercats being a more dynamic and more modern show. I remember it being more serious of a tone. Um, so it bothers me to see this juvenile approach to what, what we would probably on the surface consider to be a juvenile approach to it. Uh, I am also on the argument that then just don't watch it. If you, if you don't approve of what you see, don't approve of it. It's not for you. People say it's not for you. It's for kids that I can accept that argument at the same time. I, I, I saw this post a few days ago and I resonated with it 100%. It is not just for kids. It is also geared towards adults because if it wasn't geared towards adults, if it wasn't trying to be sold on its nostalgia to the adults who remember Thundercats, they would have just made something else. They could have made the exact same cartoon and made it kind of the same and nobody would have batted an eye. They called it Thundercats and they based it on Thundercats because they know that there is a fan base behind it that has existed for a long time and they're trying to cash in on that nostalgia. That is, I understand that argument completely. Uh, the kind of people who hate change. The movie took risks and added a lot of new elements. Uh, some people won't jive with it, but calling it where, yeah, Minnow, Minnow, uh, regarding episode eight, calling it the worst movie you've ever seen is, is idiotic, uh, because it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. And I, I've seen some pretty awful movies. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 was pretty bad. Uh, Undefeatable was pretty bad. You can, you guys can look those movies up yourself. I won't even get into them. But it was not a horrible movie. It was not a great Star Wars movie. And I think that's the real issue is that as a Star Wars movie, as a movie that is part of a lot of lore and was part of new lore building, they did a 180 on a lot of things that were built up in the... Th- there was a build-up about who Snoke was. There was a build-up about Ray's parentage. There was a build-up about Finn's role in all of this. There was a lot of this that was getting built up. And then Episode 8 immediately shot down large chunks of it. And I think... Th- it, I have a, a, a bit of a problem with Episode 8. That's where my problem lies. And it has nothing to do with Star Wars... It has everything to do with storytelling. You watch the first Matrix movie and you and you like the first Matrix movie. If you watched the second Matrix movie and they tried to say, oh, it's not all a simulation, it's all for real. You know what I mean? Like that would be like you just you just eliminated every all the relevancy of the of, of things that happened in the like all the questions that we had from the first movie, you didn't answer, you removed them. You removed the questions. You know, oh, who is Snoke? What is the true identity of Snoke? We all wanted to know. You didn't tell us. You just, you killed him and removed the question. You know, it's those kinds of things. It's that kind of poor storytelling that I don't like. As a movie, it's fine. I thought it had some great action sequences. I thought it looked great. It was fine. But as a storytelling movie, as part of a trilogy, I thought that's where it failed. 
Uh, what if I only watch quality movies? <laughs> Birdemic was pretty, uh. <laughs> Um, so our episode eight basically have F everything before. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Shadow. That's it. It said F everything before, and I didn't like that. I didn't like that aspect of it. Here's the thing: me and everyone went to go see it. Loved the heck out of episode eight, and I was having a hard time working out why people didn't like. It. Yeah, elements for me. That's exactly why I did. I that that hits the nail on the head for why I didn't like it. Was that as a story, as part of a trilogy, it completely spit on the first part and all of the questions that it brought up. Uh, Terminator Genesis. Terminator Genesis was the fifth one. And uh, it got an extremely poor reception because the entire basis of the movie literally eliminates the first four movies from uh, existence. It, it removes everything that happened from those movies from existence because it took place and had events that took place before the first movie and it removed them from relevancy completely so now the one that they're making now they are making a sixth movie but it's supposedly set sometime after the second movie saying that the third movie on never happened which i don't agree with because i believe the third movie should have happened i like the third movie I think that the third movie was important to the storyline, but they're, they're going to say that it didn't happen. Uh, oh, Shadow's headed out. Shadow, uh, have a good one. <laughs> Let's be honest. The Room was the greatest movie ever. I have still never seen that movie. I have never seen that movie. And I, I don't, I couldn't honestly tell you if I have an interest in seeing that movie. The Terminator doesn't work anyway as a series. The rules for time traveling kept changing. Um... Do you think some of the bad points? No, uh, Minnow. I think the in I, I think in order for episode nine to to fix everything, it would have to ignore episode eight. Uh, I think that there was uh, some irreparable damage done to the storytelling in episode eight that can't be fixed in episode nine. Um, uh, Suave, the uh, Terminator doesn't work anyway as a series. The rules for time traveling keep changing. Terminator works. As a, as a series. Terminator works as a storyline. Only if you use. All three of the first movies. Because. The only way the timeline works. Is that. Judgment day happens. Time displacement. Is discovered. A robot is sent back in time. To kill the leader of the human resistance. That robot's death. And the discovery of his parts moves Judgment Day forward. It makes it happen sooner than it should have. But when Judgment Day is when the T two Judgment Day is averted, the T three Judgment Day still happens. That means that it ha it, it is. That's why I like the third one so much because as a storyline, it makes everything make sense. Judgment Day has to be inevitable. The first two movies happened because the, the robots tried to stop it. But once that plan has been destroyed, it all has to still happen. That's why I like the third one, because it makes everything make sense. Without the third one, yes, it becomes an open loop where the discovery of the robot is what made Skynet happen... But this robot was never sent back. You know what I mean? Like, it, it creates a, a bad loop. Seeing as Kyle Reese is the father of John... I think it still works. I think that... I think that with with a little bit of open-mindedness, it still works. But without the third movie, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. Because if Judgment Day is completely avoided, there's no Skynet to send a robot back. So it has to happen. That's why it works. The fourth movie was just unnecessary. It offered nothing to the story. And the fifth movie eliminated all of the movies from existence. So nobody wanted to accept it. Um, oh, you're talking about a robot that was touring the U.S.? As, oh, yeah, awesome. I'm Yeah, that robot was destroyed by John Connor and his cronies in Philadelphia after traveling the UK and then ending up here, uh, it was weird to see Schwarzenegger dressed like a Pope. <laughs> I've only seen T1 and T2 years ago. It still confuses me. 
Minnow, it's not as confusing as something like Total Recall. Did you ever watch? Yes, Elements, I did. Uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles took place in an existence after the second movie. Uh, in an alternate universe from the third movie. Uh, it, the idea was that they traveled forward in time to escape uh, the robots, but they were caught anyway. It was an interesting concept, but I, I was able to accept it as an alternate universe. It got a little ridiculous, so I stopped watching it. Uh, sorry to go off topic, but does anybody remember Blinks? Uh, Blinks, the uh, Xbox One game. Uh, the uh, OG Xbox game. If that's if we're talking about the same one. Uh, Steph C, I never watched, or Steven C, I never watched the Terminator movie. I would say watch them. I would say that they're decent action. I would say that they're, they're, they're good, that they're decent action movies, and that they're good sci-fi movies. Because sci-fi and action are two different things. And, and I would say that they are decent action movies. They've got some nice action sequences. Uh, I think that they're very good sci-fi movies. Uh, 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 got a little something in my eye there. Uh, I would say watch T two, watch T two, but you got to watch T one to understand a little bit, a little bit of what's going on. Uh, I would definitely say don't skip the third Terminator movie though. I know you hear a lot of bad things about it, but storyline wise, it makes sense. Like I like I said, it ties it ties the three together as a trilogy. The fourth one just didn't belong there. Uh, it was, it was, uh, at least the fourth Die Hard movie worked on its own as a movie. <laughs> the fourth Terminator movie was just a waste of time. Uh, walks in, I never watched, I never watched a, I never watched a Sing Terminator movie walks out. Squeak, uh, I have also never seen a musical uh, singing Terminator movie. Uh, so we have that in common. I've still got to watch all the... Oh my god, you're missing so much good stuff. You're missing Alan Rickman, uh, his amazing performance in one. You're missing... Um, uh, Samuel L. Jackson was good in three, but uh, the villain, Jeremy Irons, was amazing in three. I loved him in three. <laughs> what was the fourth uh the fourth terminator movie was salvation the one with christian bale when he screams at the at the cinematographer <laughs> that which is probably the thing that everybody remembers the most about that movie <laughs> uh what do y'all think of annihilation um what do i think of annihilation uh, uh unqualified gamer i am ready for it bring it on Oh, is Annihilation something else? Okay, I thought you meant uh, uh, destruction uh, of of all life as we know it. I was, for, I'm ready for it. Bring it on. Um, the snow is the true villain in two. Yeah, watch the review about it. I say it kind of borrows a lot from essay. Oh, here. What about RoboCop? Uh, RoboCop one was a classic. RoboCop two was watchable. RoboCop three was unwatchable. And I haven't seen the more modern one. I didn't see the reboot. Or remake. That's a remake. Uh, the only Terminator movie I saw was the sequel. And even that was at the very end. <laughs> Mambo. That's a that's a different movie. Uh, I I, uh, I have seen that. It, it is Mambo Robocock is that is the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. Great waiting for that meteor. <laughs> waiting for that meteor. Here it comes. Galaxy stop. <laughs> uh, here's a new topic. If you want, what you hope will be in the new Metroid. Uh, what I hope will be in the new Metroid is probably a topic all of its own. Uh, Cause we're almost about to wrap up here. And quite frankly, I could talk about that for the next half. hour. <laughs> uh, really quick though. What I want in the new Metroid is more, a little bit more story but not too much. Uh, I think that's what I want out of a new Metroid game. I thought the RoboCop remake was okay. Uh, I, I can tell you that from what I've seen of the RoboCop remake, it's not as good as Dread. So uh, your, your homework this weekend is to go watch the movie Dread. Uh, that is an amazing movie. Uh, 
ultra violent though. So so be you are warned. Uh, isn't E3 not next week? The week after, I believe, is E3. Uh, next Friday's uh, Silver Lining is probably going to be talking about E3. Uh, and Spaceballs, Mocking Future Fantasy, Galaxy Quest. Yeah, oh, Galaxy Quest is such a great movie. Um, yeah, I think we're good here. All right, so. Uh, that is going to be, uh, the end of the stream. Uh, we are going to call it a show here. Uh, thank you guys so, so, so much for, uh, coming in and hanging out and just sort of relaxing, shooting stuff. Uh, if you get a chance, if you're, if you're catching the tail end of this, um, go back to the beginning, watch the VOD, watch when this goes up on YouTube. I'll probably just upload it as one big part on YouTube. Uh, but we talked about a lot of interesting stuff here. I think we talked about a lot of important stuff. Uh, this is one of the more relevant episodes, I would say. Um, and I'm very, very, uh, I'm very proud of not only being able to talk about it, but I'm proud of you guys for talking about it with me. Uh, I think it was pretty impressive. Um, so we are going to go, uh, have an amazing, amazing day, amazing night. Uh, if you're watching, you guys, you guys are watching live right now. Have a great weekend. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, have a great, what, whatever time period is before you. And I will talk to, wait, hold on a second here. We're lining everything up here. Um, there we go. Uh, stick around after the, after the ending card here. And then we will, we'll see if we can find somebody to raid. But for now, have a great, great night.